Okay, so Tiger Chen, thank you very much for accepting our interview for Mai Chongqing. Thank you, nice to meet you. Okay, so recently Ai Chongqing released a short video film called The Bridge Capital of China, which was about the bridges in Chongqing. Yes. So have you had a chance to watch the video? And if you have, what are your thoughts about it? Oh yes, of course. Yeah, I, uh, I actually uh, watched the video uh, several times and uh, I have been uh, personally uh, living in Chongqing for almost 12 years. And uh, I actually walk on bridges almost every day. But when I saw that video, it's, uh, it's a phenomenal uh, video. And uh, uh, I think uh, this video, from this video, we can see that Chongqing is the perfect city or the best city to be named as the uh, uh, capital of bridge or bridge capital of China, or even international-wise. Uh, I think uh, Chongqing's bridge has, you know, uh, in, in, in its way of uh, uh, quantities, uh, quality, uh, diversity, uh, or uh, aesthetics. Okay, and before you came to Chongqing, I understand you spent a number of years studying bridge design in Maryland in the USA. Yes. Okay, so um, over there, I know there were some famous, very, very famous bridges over there, such as the yes. Chesapeake Bay, also the Thomas Johnson, also the mm -hmm. Francis Scott Key. Yes. So, uh, during your years in Maryland, uh, did you gain any inspiration from studying the bridges over there? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, when I, uh, when I, I studied in University uh, of Maryland uh, for uh, six years. Um, when I was there, I, I traveled to uh, uh, Chesapeake Bay Bridge a lot. It's, a, it's, it's like the uh, uh, built in uh, 1940s, uh, right after the World War II. And it, it opened to traffic in 1952, I believe. Uh, it's almost like 60 years ago. Uh, it's a suspension bridge, uh, and by the time, uh, it's the longest uh, steel bridge over the water. Uh, it's about seven kilometers long. Uh, now we have a lot of bridges uh, worldwide. You know, uh, a more more advanced bridges and uh, um, but we, we can we can learn from uh, the bridges you know which is still open to traffic uh, almost 60 years ago we can learn a lot of uh, uh, experience you know materials uh, how to build equipment you know uh, it only took like three to four years at that time to build the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tai Tiwai Lin has built a lot of bridges in Chongqing and you know some of them have become very popular with tourists. Yeah. So when you design bridges for Chongqing, what is your central design concept? Well, well we try to again, we try to um, uh, adapt to local conditions. Uh, for example, we, uh, we designed uh, the so-called Turn River bridges. Uh, one of them is uh, over the uh, Jialing River, the uh, Qiangsimen River, uh, Jialing River Bridge. Uh, when we uh, design that bridge, when we do the schematic design, uh, we look at the conditions. It's located right at the heart of the city, and it has the best views along the waterfront. So, uh, first of all, we should make it as a, the, the bridge itself should be a landscape uh, of the city. Uh, secondly, it, the, this massive structure, it should not block the views of the pedestrian, of the a river, so uh, riverside along the riverside. So um, uh, that way, we actually designed a bridge, a cable stay bridge with fewest cables we can use. And right now, you can see uh, you can see through the uh, the, the cable plane very easily. And uh, um, uh, the, the the tower is like a a, a woven shadow uh, uh, a structure. So uh, it's also very uh, slim and. Uh, uh, unique, so it's actually the, the bridge itself now is very popular. Chongqing has a very special topography. Yes. Yeah, and of course the transport infrastructure is very important. Could you say a few words about the special relationship between a city like Chongqing and its bridges? Yeah, Chongqing actually, the, the, the topography of Chongqing is, is rather hilly. Uh, well, a lot of cities are, are like mountainous cities, uh, such like San Francisco actually. Uh, Tiwalin, uh, the, the headquarters is located in San Francisco. The two cities, the Tehran is very much similar. 
I hope we can build more bridges, you know, carrying uh, real transit traffic uh, uh, over the uh, Yangtze River and the uh, Jialing River. So uh, we can see that uh, we can have a, a, a more bright future uh, of the uh, uh, Chongqing transportation. Uh, also, uh, when we, you know, design the bridges, we try to make it a, a green infrastructure or a smart infrastructure infrastructure with uh, you know low low carbon uh, such kind of uh, uh, design concepts then you go upstream to see the Taiyuan bridge so the arch bridge so the third kind then to the Gongyan bridge that's the suspension bridge so in Chongqing you, you can see four kinds of main kinds of bridges so maybe you've witnessed a lot of changes in the transport infrastructure in Chongqing so could you talk about the biggest changes you've witnessed and what do you think the future direction of bridge design will be? Well, uh, I think uh, right now uh, we are trying to, to uh, uh, have the uh, so-called smart city. Uh, so uh, bridges are part of the uh, city uh, infrastructure. Uh, we, we all think how to uh, make it you know, smarter. Uh, like how the vehicles and the roadways can like collaborate together you know also uh, bridges and the the vehicles how they can interact you know to be like auto driving uh, also to make it safer uh, also um, make it uh, you know the, the investment uh, more economic uh, so um, it's a lot of directions we can make progress but uh, uh, I can see uh, Chongqing is actually uh, very, you know, I, I have very, uh, you know, very high expectations for, for Chongqing traffic transportation, yes. Yeah. TY Lin has designed a lot of bridges in Chongqing. So just wondering, uh, since you have a lot of experience both in China and abroad, what advantages do you think TY Lin has over its design competitors? Well, uh, we are actually the, the uh, only uh, foreign uh, design uh, enterprise uh, in, in, in Chongqing that we put the uh, headquarters in, in, in Chongqing because we uh, we are known for design bridges and this is actually the bridge capital of, of China. Um, uh, when we, uh, we we focus, we focus on infrastructure. We make it greener. We make it smarter. Uh, we also we mobilize people. Uh, uh, from our, you know, uh, San Francisco headquarters or other uh, cities to Chongqing, and we uh, focus on localization, so we can make progress on the uh, engineering projects here in Chongqing, and we uh, improve ourselves, you know, the capacity skills, and then uh, we nowadays we have uh, more than a thousand engineers uh, for Tiwaling. Uh, international China here in Chongqing. In May this year, you took part at the YCI FITS conference, and particularly a forum called the High Quality Development of Transnational Operations. Yes. Um, so during this conference, uh, did you discuss matters such as how you can apply the lessons and experiences you've gained in Chongqing to other countries and regions, uh, particularly the, the RCEP area in Southeast Asia? Uh, yes. Um, the, the basics of the, the Bridge design are all the same. It's, it's mathematics and mechanics. So um, um, we we here in Chongqing, uh, we made a lot of progress over the uh, last twenty years. Our company, Tiwan International China, has been established in, in Chongqing uh, more than twenty five years now. Uh, here in Chongqing, uh, we have a lot of uh, excellent projects you know, uh, with very complicated uh, terrains or geographic, uh, geography conditions. Also, we have uh, some projects, we have very limited land usage to design very complicated interchanges. Uh, so that way you save land, you save money. Uh, a lot of uh, RCEP uh, countries, they are developing countries. Uh, so they also need this kind of uh, technology or uh, design experiences. I think we can apply those uh, to, the, uh, to make progress of the other countries. Okay.